Hey guys, movie fan here with a little conundrum. Comic Con is on its way, and I want to be something for a change. I mean, I've gone to the Comic Con for two years now, and well, you know, I've been just my usual self. I've been in my famous Power Rangers shirt, and I've just worn everyday clothes. But this time, I want to try to be something. The problem is, I don't really have a costume. I mean, as we all know, with Comic-Cons, many people show up in costume. I want to actually try and do that this year. But unfortunately, I just don't have one. So, how am I going to get a costume fast? Let's do this. It's morphin' time! Triceratops! What do you think? Love the costume? Well, believe it or not, I made most of this all by myself. Except for a few things. I'll show you how I did it. Obviously, in order to do the costume, I have to have a blue shirt and pants. Now, I could have went for a jumpsuit. They are available. But I'm six foot four, and as you probably already figured out, I am not a skinny mini. So, obviously, that wasn't going to work for me. So, instead, I went to my local Goodwill and found a Under Armour shirt and pants that were both royal blue in color. They fit me perfectly, and the royal blue color was perfect, almost exact to what Blue Ranger wore back in the day. So I went with it. And since this was Goodwill, huh, it hardly cost me anything. Barely seven bucks for the pair. Obviously, I kept the pants the exact same way they were. I didn't remove the white stripe because I thought it gave it a unique look. So I decided to leave it alone. Besides, people, I wouldn't be the first one to put a unique style to a Power Rangers costume. I mean, look at Power Rangers Unworthy. So that was okay for me to leave the pants the way they were. But the shirt, I had to have the white diamonds. The trick is adding white diamonds to a shirt that's already been made. But the solution was really quite simple. What I did was, I bought myself some white transfer paper. You know, the type that if you print out an image onto this paper and you iron it on your shirt, you got that image on your shirt? That's what I went with. I printed out some diamonds on the transfer paper, I cut them out, I ironed them right on, and voila, I got diamonds. I decided to go with a bit of a mixture of the movie and the TV series. By that I mean I got three diamonds on the front, that's from the series, and I got two diamonds on the back, that's from the movie. There's one thing I should add though. If you intend on using transfer paper to make your Power Rangers shirt, get the transfer paper that's meant for dark colored fabric. You don't want to use the light colored one. It will not work on there. Trust me, I did extensive research on that before I tried it. And every one of them say exactly the same thing. Get the one that works for dark colored clothes. And royal blue color is pretty dark. So keep that in mind. Now I know what you're going to ask me. How did I manage to get the white collar? Well, it's really quite simple. I looked online and I found a white turtleneck dickie. Yeah, they actually still make those things. I just simply looked online, found one that was white and with a turtleneck style, and I bought it. And all you gotta do is just wear that under your shirt, and you're set. With the main portion of the costume being the suit itself being done, I moved on to the next part, the gloves. Now, you can actually find white gloves here and there that work for you. However, I had an old pair of leather renaissance gloves that I never really wore much. So I decided to get some leather paint and paint them all white. And of course, I painted in the blue diamonds myself. It took a lot of work, especially since I had to wait for it to dry every now and again. That way I could add more layers. But I'd say it turned out really well. One important feature which I had to do was get the boots. Now, obviously, I know nothing about making boots of any kind. So I did some digging online and I found out that on eBay, they actually sell plain white boots that are the exact specifications from the Power Rangers series. All you got to do is add the diamonds. So I bought a pair and I painted in the diamonds. Here's a few demonstrations of what I did. How I did this was quite simple. 
I printed out the diamond shapes exactly the way I wanted them. I traced the outlines on the boots with a black marker. And when I was done with that, I got some royal blue leather paint because these are leather boots. And I just painted in the diamonds. Now, what I'm doing with the brush here is just merely a demonstration. I didn't put any paint on that because, you know, this was a one-shot thing and I did not want to ruin it. And the results were really awesome if I do say so myself. The final feature of the costume, and I found this to be the most fun, was making the famous holster. Believe it or not, they do not sell the holster anywhere. I know, it's shocking, right? Well, because of that problem, I had to do it myself. And how I did it was really quite simple. I bought myself some white duct tape, and I just made one flat layer with the sticky side facing up. When I had that to the size I wanted it, I made another layer with the sticky side facing down. Of course, obviously, I unrolled it right onto the sticky side to finish it off. When I was happy with the size, I cut it just the way I wanted it. And by that, I mean I cut it into an even flat square. Then I rolled it into a cone, and then I taped it together. Of course, I couldn't make the holster without help from the blade blaster, so I bought myself a blade blaster online. For this part, I had to eyeball it as to how it sat in the holster, how much of the handle is exposed, how much of the tip is exposed, that sort of thing. I snipped away at the holster a little bit here and there until I got it just where it needed to be. After that, I got some pieces of duct tape, put them together, and then I created the belt loop. After that, I pulled out my trusty little black marker, and I painted the little black lines that are seen on the holster. Of course, there were two more things I had to get. One was a white belt. I just went to my local army surplus store and bought myself a military dress white belt. And obviously for the uh, helmet here, I just bought this off of eBay for about mm, 21 bucks. It hardly cost me anything. It's just a cheapo style that's attached by Velcro. But you know, compared to the ones that are online right now for real professional cosplay, they're way over 200 bucks and up. Now I know what you're going to ask me. How did I make the Power Lance? Well, believe it or not, I saw a YouTube video showing how to make each Power Ranger weapons out of cardboard and duct tape. Of course, in this case, I decided to change it up just a little, but I'll give you the link below because it's very helpful. It helped me big time. What I did was I basically got PVC pipe that I just happen to have lying around. Lucky me. It's one inch thick, and you know, I cut it to just the length I wanted it. And, well, these parts, the trident parts, are actually made out of plastic instead of cardboard. Yeah, I actually drew out the trident shapes, and I'm talking about the individual triangles. That'll make better sense if you watch said video. And I cut them out with an oscillator because it's very difficult to cut plastic without breaking it. Trust me on that one. And when I cut them out, I duct taped them together with Gorilla Tape. And when I was finished, I covered it with silver tape. That's why it looks so shiny metallic. Oh, and if you're wondering about structural strength, I just shoved a whole bunch of torn up magazines and newspapers in there. And a little tip. If you want it to be structurally sound enough where it doesn't like wobble, I suggest you fill it all the way from tips all the way back to here and cover it with tape. Believe me, if you jam a lot of newspaper and or magazine parts in there, it will really help a lot. That way it'll be nice and stiff, just the way you want it to be, because you don't want this thing wiggling, do you? Of course not. And of course for the power coins that I got on all four sides, I just simply printed out a picture of the power coins, see? And I just stuck them on, that's all. And uh, yes, this is blue duct tape, believe it or not, yeah. Now, I know you might be asking, how tall should I make this? Well, my recommendation would be, make it as tall as you, if not taller. I'm six foot four, and I wanted this to be about as tall as me, maybe just a little taller, so now it's uh, six foot five, maybe six foot five and a half, and that's fine with me. Because, you know, I would rather have a longer weapon than a real short one, when it comes to the lance, anyway. Now, you can't actually make this where it's just two parts and there is a method to probably do it where you can connect and disconnect them like they did in the series which didn't happen very often but I like it as a whole it all depends what you want to do so my advice check out that video and take what I say into account because it really helps now that I've given you these tips I'm going to the comic-con
This is Movie Fan, teleporting out.